Hi guys. Today I want to compare two 3D software suites, Blender and Rhino. Now this video is aimed at beginners, but if you've done any research at all into these two products, this may strike you as kind of an odd comparison to make. So let me explain. The first point of comparison is their availability. Blender is of course free and open source, but Rhino for students, they have a perpetual license for I think it was $200. Several years ago, when I was approaching 3D for the first time, kind of, uh, I was doing so as kind of a generalist. Um, I wanted 3D skills in the same way that I think that anybody can benefit from uh, some photography skills or Photoshop skills or videography skills. You don't have to be representing a company or a brand to, uh, to benefit from having those skills in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, I see 3D as the same thing. I've used it several times as a tool in uh, you know, various retail jobs or just organizing things. It's a good thing to know how to do. I was taking a 3D fabrication class at the same time as a video art class. So I had Rhino as part of the 3D fabrication class and I was looking into using it to produce animations for my video art class, and uh, it wasn't quite up to the task, and a classmate recommended Blender, so I kind of delved into that. Uh, I didn't get serious about it until years later, um, but at the time I was looking for a video uh, to help somebody transition from Rhino to Blender, and I think I'm now in a position to make that video. Uh, so I'm going to compare the two, talk about uh, what one is used for versus the other. Um, I'm also going to talk about uh, how to use things that you make in Rhino, in Blender, and vice versa, and why you might do that. Um, but overall, just want to combine these two concepts, these two tools. Okay, so first off, let me explain what I see as the main difference between Blender and Rhino. Blender is better if you want to do something with your creation in the virtual world after you've created it. If you want to put it in a game, uh, if you want to make a rendering, if you want to animate it, rig it, uh, do basically anything with it still as a virtual object, Blender's your guy. Rhino, on the other hand, is better if you plan on fabricating it. Uh, especially for large-scale things, one of its main uses is designing buildings. So. Um, it, it has a lot of plugins and tools that allow you to place things in an actual site, um, use uh, like uh, geological data, um, actually provide plans um, with which you can communicate with like a builder or a contractor. Um, it's very good for 3D printing. The other thing that Rhino is really good at is uh, like mathematically perfect shapes. It's a uh, it's a nerve editor, nerves editor first of all, um, but also uh, using Grasshopper, which is kind of a it's like a plugin that kind of replaces a lot of the functionality found in Rhino proper. Um, you can create a lot of data driven geometry. Um, for example, incorporating uh, latitude and longitude and uh, figuring out sun exposure and stuff like that. Um, you can also do, you know, you can define the curve of a shape very precisely. Um, so if you're trying to, uh, you know, fit one part into another, it's good for that. Uh, precision, it's good with that. Uh, measuring things in actual units. Um, you can do that in Blender, uh, but it's a little bit more difficult, and uh, it's kind of up to you for the most part. And unless I'm missing a plugin or something, it's kind of up to you to keep everything in line. Um, so that's the main difference. Blender is for uh, creating assets that will be used virtually. Rhino is better for creating assets that will eventually be constructed or printed or built. So along. With that, um, obviously, Blender is, I, I would say, way way better for rendering, for texturing, for sculpting, um, manipulating a mesh, and providing textures for those mesh, and representing that mesh on a 
computer screen, television screen, something like that. Blender's way better. Rhino I do find is better uh, for producing 2D drawings. Uh, the make 2D option is fantastic, uh, and it was it was a lot more straightforward to uh, like then go go forward and edit line drawings in Illustrator, or crop them, and do whatever you wanted to them afterwards. That was a lot easier coming out of Rhino. And another principal difference between Blender and Rhino is the method of interfacing with the software. Uh, in Blender, uh, and it's once you learn it, it's a great way of doing things. Everything is based on keyboard shortcuts. There's, I think there's commands that you cannot find in the menu somewhere. I could be wrong about that, but uh, for a lot of things, you just have to... I The way I did it, I just watched enough tutorials, and I pick up one or two, you know, try to pick one up every tutorial, and uh, eventually it's really fast, because um, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts are a single, like, letter, instead of, you know, some of them are unwieldy, but a lot of them are really fast, and uh, uh, the selection tools, especially in Blender, are really good. Um, in, in Rhino, rather than it being a bunch of keyboard shortcuts, you're doing a lot of stuff on the command line, you're typing in, you know, I want to make a polyline or a control point line. Um, and there's shorthand, but it's, you're still typing most of the command. Um, so activating the commands is a little slower. Um, but the other thing you need to realize about Rhino is the commands are a little bit more elegant. There's, there's more going on. Um, Basically, the most advanced thing you can do in Blender directly from a keyboard shortcut is like bevel, extrude, um, inset, which allows you to uh, scale a face in its own uh, XY plane and then also inset it along its normal. Um, in Rhino, some of the commands are really sophisticated. Uh, you'll it, it'll be like a like a four step process. You'll have to create a series of like guidelines and then select those in a certain order, and then run a command, and then alter the properties of that command or the the options of that command, I should say, in a menu, and then you click OK, and then it produces your geometry. Um, but it's it's kind of a similar thing where if you don't know the command to run, it's you can get stuck. And if you don't know, like like I said about selecting things in a certain order, that can trip you up sometimes. And uh, I, I will say, you know, Rhino is a commercial product, so the documentation is a little bit better. And uh, when I when I run into problems in Rhino the solution tends to be less frustrating. It's just something I didn't know. Uh, in Blender, it's sometimes like, okay, well, like, why can't you do that? And it, and it ends up just being, you know, it's open source, nobody's developed that. Uh, I love seeing the answers. Sometimes uh, the developers or somebody involved in Blender uh, will respond to a feature request with like, oh, that's a really good idea. Like, you should do that. <laughs> you know, you have access to the code base. If you really want to see something in there, put it in there. Uh, learn Python. Um, okay, so I mentioned uh, Grasshopper for Rhino. There's an analog to that in the Blender world, and it's called Animation Nodes. I think it's on like its second version or something. Um, I don't know if they've caught up with uh, Blender's development. Blender's in uh, turmoil right now, but uh, in, a, in a good way. A lot of things are changing for the better. Um, but uh, it, it basically allows you to, it's a, it's a graphic, it's a node-based, graphical programming language in both cases, uh, animation nodes and grasshopper for Rhino. Um, it's a, it's a visual programming language where you kind of have access to the geometry in a more direct way and you can produce little programs or loops that can be run on the, 
on the geometry and incorporate all kinds of outside data. Uh, you can do uh, attractors, which is um, briefly, it's using uh, false or empty or invisible geometry to the, the position and size of some invisible geometry to affect things like the scale of an object or the shape of an object. Um, you can do that with Grasshopper and animation nodes. Um, so yeah, I, w I was working with uh, mostly Grasshopper in Rhino, uh, so I was really excited when I switched to Blender and, uh, well not switched, but discovered Blender, got better at it, and discovered animation nodes, because it's, uh, it's a really cool method of working. Um, if you do it right, uh, the, the, your programs, your patches are modular and reusable, and I like stuff like that, um, being able to reuse and uh, being able to not repeat your work is fantastic. Okay, so I said I would talk a little bit about why you might move back and forth between these two programs. Uh, if you create something in Rhino and you want uh, just a really beautiful rendering of it, um, taking it into Blender and if it's simple enough, just uh, giving it materials and then rendering it, uh, you can get better results in Blender, I think, just the tools for moving your lights around and manipulating them and stuff, it's just a little handier. Um, on the other hand, if your geometry is too complex and uh, the way Rhino works, you're gonna end up with some complex geometry pretty quickly. Um, you may end up needing to retopologize, re topologize, uh, which basically means you're not starting from scratch, but you're the only manner in which you're using the original object that you created as, is as a guide to create uh, your, your actual mesh. Um, it may not make sense depending on where you are in your 3D career, but um, you're also going to want to move from Rhino to Blender if you're looking to do any kind of animation whatsoever. Um, I had some success at making like a cool looking object and then just spinning it around even in Blender. Uh, <laughs> Rhino is not set up for animation. You can do like turntable animations and it has, uh, or had I should say, I'm on version 5, uh, it had path animation, um, but very difficult to use, and I wasn't getting thrilling results. It would be better for just like very, very simple architectural animations, just, uh, uh, you know, rough drafts and like quick back and forth to a client or something. Not very, uh, you can't do you can't like move individual pieces around very easily. It's uh, kind of a nightmare trying to do any kind of cool animation in Rhino. All right, so finally, why might you be moving from Blender to Rhino? Uh, this is a little bit, I, I haven't actually done this yet, I don't think. Um, if you did so, you would probably be using, you'd be like a scenic designer and you would be using Blender uh, for its like rapid modeling uh, and turning out ideas and uh, doing mock-ups and stuff, renderings, and uh, in, in the creative process. And then when you went to actually construct uh, what you were working on, I guess you don't have to be a scenic designer. You can do this for anything. Uh, creative stuff in Blender just for... Uh, the visual tools and stuff, and then once you actually move towards constructing it, like basically do kind of a similar workflow, not retopologize, but use, you know, perspective orthographic views of your model to generate the geometry again in Rhino, and then produce plans and line drawings and stuff like that. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you in the next video.